streaming. Check, hello, can you hear me? Uh, good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is... Rizky Utami, and in this precious change for me to be your Master of Ceremony in this special occasion, International Guest Lecture from University Science Malaysia with the topic Bioreactor Engineering in Bioprocessing. Uh, so for today, we already have 147 participants from students, and we also have several lecturers from Department of Agricultural Engineering. First of all, Let's express our gratitude to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, who has given us hope amidst this pandemic, so we can gather virtually in this event, hopefully without any obstacle. The honorable speaker, Associate Professor Dr. Husnul Azan Tajarudin, to the honorable Dr. Lahofia Hawa as the head of Agricultural Engineering Department, to the honorable Dr. Yusuf Bibisono as the head of Engineering Study Program and all dearest participants. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start to our main event, let's start this event with praying first so that we hope we can run this event without any obstacle at all. Pray based on individual belief, begin. Uh, then, so before we going to our main event, I would like to remind to all participants to oblige the following rules. First, please register with your real name and email. Second, make sure you already use the name in the format. It is name underscore institution. So to all participants, please change your name uh, and rename according to the format that given. Uh, the next is during the guest lecture, participants should turn off the, mi the microphone and can turn it on when the moderator has invited to ask. Questions could be asked via Zoom room chat or can be addressed directly to the moderator. Attendance form and participants feedback form will be shared during the lecture. Okay, before we going to our main event, let me introduce you to the rundown of the, this event. Today's event, we will start with opening and then we're going to hear will coming speech from Head of Agricultural Engineering Department, Dr. Lahofia Hawa. And the third agenda will be main lecture from Associate Professor Dr. Husnul Azan Tajarudin. The next is question and answer session. And after that, we are going to hear closing speech from the head of Bioprocess Engineering Study Program, Dr. Yusuf Pibisono, and the last one is closing. Okay, so let's begin our first agenda today. Let's hear a welcoming speech from Dr. Lahofia Hawa, the head of Agricultural Engineering Department. 
And ladies and gentlemen, here's the speech from Dr. Lahofiahawa. Dr. Lahofiahawa, time is yours. Okay, thank you, Moderata. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good, good morning, everyone, and best wishes for all of you. Uh, the Honorable Associate Professor Dr. Husnul Azanta Jarudin from Bioprocess Technology Division, School of Industrial Technology, University Science Malaysia. The Honorable All Staff Member of Agricultural Engineering Event uh, Department, and the Honorable Ladies and Gentlemen and all of participants of today's international guest lecture. In this occasion, first of all, let us thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty God who has given us his blessing and mercies so we can gather today in healthy and good condition. Guest lecture is an annual event that helps regularly to enhance the staff and student competence in agricultural engineering department. From this event, we get scientific and practical knowledge from another country. And today, we are from Agricultural Engineering Department proudly present the international guest lecture from Associate Professor Dr. Husnul Azam Tajaruddin from Bioprocess Technology Division, School of Industrial Technology, University Science Malaysia. I would like to say thank you very much for being us today, Dr. Husnul. And today's international guest lecture with theme Bioreactor Engineering in Bioprocessing. As we know that uh, bioreactor is the core of biological process. To design an appropriate bioreactor system for a particular bioprocess, intensive studies on the biological system, such as cell growth, metabolism, or other product expression, are needed to understand the cell requirement on their physical and chemical environments. It is also necessary to control and optimize the bioreactor environment via operating variables in order to favor the desired function of cell and achieve cost-effective large-scale manufacture. So I'm sure that today's guest lecture will be very interesting to enhance our knowledge. I also want to say thank you very much for all committee members from Bioprocess Engineering Study Program Dr. Yusuf Ibisono and team who work hard to prepare and organize this online guest lecture event. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking forward to seeing positive outcome from this guest lecture and hope all of you will gain the utmost benefit. And please do not hesitate if you have any question to Dr. Husnul Azanta Jarudin. Thank you very much for your great attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Lahofi Hawa, for the speech. Uh, before we going to main session, I would like to take a photo with all the participants. So, uh, to all participants, please turn on your camera for documentation. Okay, let's just smile and I will count one, two, three and hold your smile, okay? Uh, one, two, three, say cheers, cheers. Okay, is that enough operator or we need to take another photo? Okay, once more. One, two, three, say cheers. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so before we're going to main session, I would like to introduce the moderator today. This international guest lecture will be moderated by Mr. Anki Wahyu Putranto. Mr. Anki is a lecturer from Bioprocess Engineering Study Program, graduated from Faculty of Agricultural Engineering, Brawijaya University, for his undergraduate and postgraduate study. His latest publication is about lignocellulose analytics of biomass by using thermal pulse electric field, natrium hydroxide 
pretreatment published in Reactor Journal. So without further ado, I would like to give a warm welcome to my own lecturer, Mr. Anki Wahyu Putranto, that will moderate our international guest lecture. So Mr. Anki, time is yours. Oke, okay, thank you for the MC. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, and good morning everyone. Uh, today we will have the second international guest lecture. Yeah, organized by Bayer Process Engineering Study Program Universitas Brawijaya in collaboration with the University Science Malaysia. Uh, maybe let me remind the participant that we have time until 10:30 a.m. and we have continue with the discussion session. For the question, uh, participant allowed to write the uh, question in the Zoom chat, or the participant can raise hand, and I will give a chance to participant to ask the question directly. Okay, uh, before we start this uh, main event today, uh, let me give the overview of curriculum vitae of our keynote speakers. Maybe the uh, committee can show the, uh, sir, the, okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, his name is uh, Dr. Usnul Azan Tajaruddin. Yeah. Okay, next. Uh, he is an associate professor in Bioprocess Technology Division, uh, School of Industrial Technology, University of Saints, Malaysia. Okay, maybe next. Next slide, maybe. Okay. Okay. Uh, his field of specialization is bioprocess, uh, bioprocess engineering. Yeah. And he is active in research uh, as shown well in their grand achievement. And you can see in the screen. Okay, next. Um, and this is the. Okay, next. Maybe. Okay, and this is the current research and past related research, such as a study of membrane director for enhanced uh, process of fermentation an investigation of leachate fermentation for fatty acid production, a study of anaerobic digestion for solid waste in, uh, in the landfill, and etc. And uh, next, he is also has many publications uh, in journal and book or uh, book chapter related to upstream and downstream bioprocess that publish in higher reputation publisher. Okay, uh, he got several patents uh, like uh, conversion, leachate to acetic and putric acid, yeah. Separation acetic and putric acid by an uh, activated carbon, uh, production of nanoparticle carbon, uh, calcium carbonate from wastewater by Bacillus pericus, and etc. Okay, next. And uh, he also uh, got a special Croatia Award, yeah. gold medal and silver medal in Malaysia Technology Expo 2020. Yeah. Okay, shortly. Please welcome Associate Professor Dr. Husnul Azanta Jarudin, and time is yours. Uh, maybe Dr. Husnul, you have uh, 25 minutes for the lecture. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we can hear you, Dr. Husnul. Hello, Assalamualaikum. 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 Okay, all of you can uh, see my slide. Uh, 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 okay, okay, thank you very much to all of you. Okay, I'm Dr. Husnul Azan uh, from uh, Division of Bioprocess, School of Industrial Technology, University of Malaysia. Thank you very much, especially to uh, uh, Deputy Head of Agriculture. Uh, and then uh, head of uh, engineering unit, Dr. Yusuf, and all of audience. <clears throat> okay, today I would like to share with you all of you about the bioreactor engineering in bioprocessing.
Okay, firstly, I would like to ask you what is a bioprocess? I would like to explain what is a bioprocess. Bioprocess actually is a process, it's a specific process that uses complete living cell of their component, such as bacteria, enzyme, or so on, to obtain desired product. And then transport of energy and mass is a fundamental to many biological and environmental process. So the uh, microorganism or any kind of biological uh, is a, such as in the uh, listed in the slide, such as yeast, fungi, algae, tissue culture, enzyme, viruses, Excuse and me. Yes. Excuse me. Uh, we, uh, we cannot see the uh, screen. Uh, we cannot see the. Slide slide point, the, oh, okay. Yeah, maybe you can start the share screen. But now it's okay now. Yeah. Okay. You can see. Okay. Maybe you can. Uh, Slide show. Okay. okay. Good. Okay. Yes. Please. Okay. Uh, so, can we continue now? Yes. Yes. You yes. Can. Okay. Okay, then about the application of bioprocess, actually application of bioprocess is, has a widely used. First is about uh, is, uh, to agriculture, uh, like to prepare a seed or to prepare a fertilizer and so on. And then it's a medical or pharmaceutical, it has been used a long time ago to produce insulin, to produce drug and other things. And then nowadays, recently, they use a bioprocess for oil and gas or mining to extract uh, minerals and oil as well. And then for energy, for like a biogas, a microbiofuel cell and others, for environment, for treatment, uh, pollution, for construction, such as uh, self-healing. And then finally is a for food. For food is a like, a, like a tempeh uh, and others products. So the advantage of bioprocess is a sustainable technology, green technology, and I could consider it's a cheaper process because it's a use a less chemical because it's a less chemical consumption. And then a step of bioprocessing can be divided to three things or three stage stage stages. First is an upstream, midstream, and downstream. So what is an upstream? Upstream processing is a Upset, upstream processing, this here is upstream, upstream processing, which is a refer, the first step in a what, which biomolecules are grown usually by bacteria or mammalian. So bioreactors are included in this process. And then as in as an engineer, we need to uh, think about the process of extraction. So before the process of extraction or before the process of harvesting the product from bioreactor, we must have a one system that's called is a midstream to hold to storage to storage the uh, products or the uh, crude of uh, products. That's we call is a midstream, and finally is a downstream. It's a process to extract the product from a biology a bioprocessing system. So now we're talking about bioreactor. What is a bioreactor? Bioreactor is a vessel in which an organism is cultivated in a controlled manner to produce the organism or a product or in some specialized cases to carry out specific reaction. Use such as vessel has allowed lab result to be translated to scale up to 
100,000 liter per commercial process. Initially, the vessel are called bioreactor. Okay, this is about the historical development of bioreactor. We can see here, uh, it was started, it's at 3,000 before Christ to 1,900. That is a product that time is an alcohol or vinegar. And then the vessel only, the vessel is uh, made from wooden, copper, and tray. Meanwhile, the process control is uh, only for thermometer, heat, ex exchanger. And then the culture method is a batch method. And at that time, that's not have uh, any quality control. And then after that, it's continued in 1900 to 1940. The product is a change from the food before this uh, into 3000 before Christ to uh, 1900 or 1900 years. Uh, they produce a small food industry. But in 19th, uh, 19th to 1940, they produce others product to industries such as glycerol, citric acid, and acetone. And then the vessel at that time is a steel, which is a, with a mechanical steering. The process control at that time is a pH control and temperature as well. But the culture of method have an improvement, which is they understand or they explore about the feedback system. And then the quality co uh, control also, I could say, is uh, almost nothing about the quality control. They not understand about the quality, quality control. But in 1940, they start to use a bioprocess uh, system to produce uh, medical or pharmaceutical pro, uh, industry. They, try, they involve with a pharmaceutical and medical industry. And then we can see here the culture method also is a improved that they understand about the continuous system. Then quality control is a very important at that time. They understand about the quality control. And until now, it's a lot of other industry use a bioprocessing system. Okay, this is a example of bioreactor. The first one, this one is a um, uh, homemade bioreactor, we can consider it a bioreactor because it also has an organism inside the tanks. And then this is a commercial or lab uh, scale of uh, bioreactor. The optimum culture of microorganism must be ensured in terms of material and design of bioreactor. Ratio of medium uh, volume bioreactor, um, uh, ratio of medium volume between medium volume and bioreactor volumes, type of medium sterilization, and type of strength, uh, strength of aeration and agitation. That means here, optimum culture of my, microorganism uh, can be achieved if we develop our bioreactor with a suitable material and design of bioreactor. Ratio between medium volume and bioreactor volume is a fit or suitable. And then type of medium sterilization, because of a sterilization have a many methods such as heating, chemical methods, and then UV methods, and a lot of things. And then type and strength of aeration and agitation. So we need to consider all of that uh, factor before we design our bioreactor to ensure the microorganism can uh, working in the optimum condition. So this is an example. Uh, Sheik Plus also can consider it as a bioreactor. And here is a bioreactor in the labs, also a bioreactor in the labs. So characteristic of bioreactor, so we can divide the characteristic of bioreactor to seven points. First is a mode of bioreactor. So mode of bioreactor such as batch, continuous, feed batch, and others. So the basic uh, mode of bioreactor has a three. First is a batch, continuous, and feed batch. But because of uh, recently many uh, researchers combined between uh, to make it uh, become more effective with uh, like uh, semi-continuous and others. And then after that, the type of bioreactor in the world have a lot variety of bioreactor. And then, then we need to consider the character of bioreactor is about the upscaling. 
and then system of sterilization, aeration, and agitation, then kinetic study, condition of condition like uh, aerobic, anaerobic, mixed culture, single culture, and others. And then finally, is a probe or sensor in the bioreactor, pH, temperature, dissolved oxygen, and level sensor, or etc. So this is a, I would like, first I would like to discuss about the mode of bioreactor. So this is a basic of mode bioreactor. First is a batch bioreactor, batch mode. Second is a continuous mode. And thirdly is a fit batch mode. Okay, about the batch mode is not, we can see clearly here, is not have a fresh nutrient fit in in the bioreactor and not have a, any cell or any kind of nutrient go out from bioreactor. So all of the reaction, all of the process occur inside the bioreactor. How, however, for continuous bioreactor, we can see here, here clearly here, the feeding or sterilized nutrient feeding in, in the bioreactor. And then cell plus nutrient after the process, during the process of uh, fermentation will take out. And then the volume is stagnant. So actually for continuous, continuous uh, bio, uh, mode bioreactor can be divided to two types. One is a chemostat and second is to be distat. The chemostat is depends or is relies on volume, which means uh, <clears throat> The volume uh, go out is a similar with fresh medium uh, come in from come in into the bioreactor. Is that clear about chemostat? Yes, yeah, sir. Clear. Okay, then to be this that it so that means here the volume is stagnant. The volume is stagnant, and we install here uh, the level sensor to ensure the level sensor of uh, the, uh, the volume of uh, media is stagnant. And then here is a to be this start is a for continuous uh, system. They use almost similar system, but they not relies on volume, but they relies on others parameter, such as in this picture, it relies on uh, optical density. So others, uh, other system maybe that's relies on carbon dioxide production. This uh, this system on this picture I show you, I show you about the optical density, and then after that is a feed batch. Feed batch means is a is a continuously feed in uh, sterilized nutrient, but it's not have a. Uh, cell out or nutrient uh, nutrient out. It's just uh, uh, it's just uh, feed in the fresh media or fresh uh, sterilized nutrient uh, slowly until it's uh, achieved the level they want, and then after that they will stop their process. So this is a profile of. This is a profile of a uh, mod uh, system. We can see here, if we use a batch system, so our cell will continuously grow until one uh, phase, it will stagnate, and finally that phase. It's the same like a product, it's with, uh, it's, it will continuously produce, and until one stage or one phase, it will stagnate, and then substrate until at the end of, uh, until the, Substrate is completely finished. How about uh, the? However, for continuous, the cell product and substrate is a stagnant because it's continuously pumping or feeding in the bioreactor. Then, for the feed batch, for cell, it will grow until the volume of the bioreactor is a full and then it will stop and then it start again. Okay, then now I'm talking about the type of bioreactor. Okay, actually the type bioreactor generally can be divided into the two major uh, groups. 
First is a tubular with its uh, height over diameter is bigger than 10. But then it's a considered sterile bioreactor if height over diameter is a less than 10. Then for tubular, it can be divided to seven group like a fluidized bed, pack bed bioreactor, loop reactor, plus column, membrane bioreactor, bubble column, and photo bioreactor. Meanwhile, for sera, a bioreactor is just can divide it to conventional bioreactor. It's a commonly used in the labs. Uh, what half bioreactor, fully filled bioreactor, membrane bioreactor, and vacuum bioreactor. Okay, this is a, I give an example. Uh, this the picture. Uh, this figure shows a bubble of columns for figure A. This is a bubble column. This is a, we call it a bubble uh, column bioreactor, like here. I will show you here, bubble column. It's under tubular. It's a bubble column there. And then an internal air leaf bioreactor. The B is an internal air leaf bioreactor. Is under internal air leaf bioreactor, is under loop reactor, internal loop or external loop. Okay, then this one also air leaf bioreactor. And then this is a fluid dice a be, uh, uh, batch, fluid dice uh, batch, batch mod, means it's uh, immobilized the bacteria enzyme into the uh, other catalyst here. Okay, this is a membrane bioreactor. This is a, the first one here is a parallel uh, submerged membrane bioreactor. And this is a parallel membrane bioreactor. And this is a fixed bed bioreactor, fixed bed bi bioreactor, which is a, they use a gel be uh, beads or polymer or other kinds of nets to immobilize enzyme, bacteria, or other cells. And then uh, after that, put into the bioreactor. And then influent, influent will pumping into the bioreactor and influent will come out. The process or the process of biological process will occur inside the bioreactor. Then about the probes and sensor, it can be divided to two groups. It's a physical and chemical. For physical, it's a such as temperature, pressure, agitator, shaft power, form, waste, flow rate, RPM. Uh, it's all, it can consider it's a physical probes. And then chemical probes is a such as pH, redox, oxygen, exits, gas analysis, and medium analysis. It can consider as a chemical probes. And then, What's the most important characteristic of bioreactor? We need to uh, know is a is a kinetics. What is a kinetics? Uh, kinetic is a like is a calculation. But I don't want to show you. I don't want to teach you how to calculate here because if I want to, if I teach you the calculation, it will take time. So I just want to show you what's the important para kinetic parameter such as mu. That is a gross rate. And then how to measure new or gross rate manually so that we can plot, plot graph uh, ln x. Ln x means a ln of biomass versus times. And then mu is the ingredient. And then what, what is uh, Ks? Ks is substrate utilization constant. And then character, then this is the characteristic of KS and then D, uh, DP or DT, productivity form formation, all of that is a calculation. Kinetic is related with a calculation. Then about the upscaling. So before we go to the upscaling, what we need to do, because most of people, most of industry, they like, they, they has a tendency to upscale their process why because they want to produce in the bio in the in the mass volume so before we start the upscaling so we need to consider this step because to avoid uh, to, to avoid the process is 
unsuccessful. So firstly, it's a lab scale. From the data in the lab scale, we can analyze using a uh, we can we can analyze a kinetic analysis, and then after that we will develop a simulation. And then after the, during the pro, uh, the developing of simulation, we will uh, simulate for the upscaling as well. Then after that we will run the upscaling process and we will investigate if the process is a successful or unsuccessful. <clears throat> then now uh, we're talking about design future and steerer of a steerer tank bioreactor. So it can I would like to share with you or to discuss with you about the design criteria, body construction and standard geometry of steerer tank bioreactor. Okay, about design criteria, points to consider in the design. First is a capable of accepting operation for a number of days and reliable long-term operation, most critical as well, as meet the requirement of contaminant regulation. Contam contaminants involve uh, prevention of escape of viable cell from fermenter or bioreactor or downstream processing equipment into the environment. Adequate aeration agitation without damage to cell, low power consumption, easy and dependable temperature, system for monitoring and regulating pH of the fermentation broth, sampling facilities should be provided, evaporation losses should not be exceed, and a minimal use of labor in operation, harvesting, cleaning, and maintenance. So that means is uh, if we can minimize the, the labor in operation, harvesting, cleaning, and maintenance, that is a very good criteria of bioreactor. And then <clears throat> the versatile of uh, the versatile of range of process that means that our bioreactor can be can be used for versatile of range processes and then construct to ensure smooth in, smooth internal surface using welds instead of flange joint whenever uh, possible so that means internal of bioreactor should be surf, uh, smooth surface because if it's a not smooth surface it's have a, like a loops or it have a uh, damage inside the bio uh, bioreactor, so the bacteria or other cell can hide inside the uh, inside the hole or inside the damage. So vessel should be a similar geometry to both smaller and larger vessel in the pilot plan or plan to facilitate scale up, and then constructed constructed using cheapest material that effort takes. Satisfactory result to be achieved, adequate service provision, compressed air, power maintenance facilities for individual plants. So then we conclude, most important bioreactor for industrial application is conventional mixing vessel, steroid tank bioreactor, so which is a low capital cost, low operating cost, best understood and flexible. So that is the best bioreactor. So for body construction or vessel construction of bioreactor, in fermentation with strict aseptic requirement, material must be able to withstand repeated steam sterilization cycle. So that means the bioreactor or the vessel of bioreactor must be stand uh, if we want to repeat it using a steam sterilization, heating sterilization, or other kind of sterilization. So because a, some kind of cheapest bioreactor, sometimes when we repeat it to use a sterilization system, it will damage. So that means it's a not good uh, bioreactor. So, and then the lab scale, glass is a use for liquid volume of less than 10 liters. Same. Glass is useful because it uh, gives a smooth surface. As I mentioned before, if we don't have a smooth surface inside the bioreactor, perhaps the bacteria, cell, or other kinds of uh, 
microorganism can hide inside the damage or inside the hole of in, uh, inside the bioreactor. And then secondly, it's a non-toxic and then corrosion proof and easy to examine in interior of vessel. Two basic of types of fermenter are used, a glass vessel with rounds of flat bottom. That means it's a, others, uh, either the flat uh, bottom or round bottom and top flange carrying plates. Slicization is a by autoclaving. Uh, a glass cylinder with a stainless steel top and bottom plates may be sterilized in situ. Diameter is a 30 centimeter. Upper size limits to safely withstand working pressure. Okay, this is for example, this is a, uh, we can see here, glass fermenter with top flange and carrying plates. This is a top, uh, top flange carrying plates. Okay, glass fermenter with top and bottom plates. Okay, this is a uh, bottom plates. Okay. Pilot and large scale, any material used will have to be assessed on their ability to withstand pressure sterilization, ability to withstand corrosion. So that is the important material we need to consider for pilot and large scale of bioreactor. Larger volumes, Mostly we use a stainless steel as a materials. Wood, plastic, concrete have been used when contamination was not a problem in process. So for example, like a bio, biogas, uh, it's like a biogas or anaerobic digestion, is a contamination is a not a major issue in that process. So like, because they use a mixed culture, but for process, biological process use or bioprocessing of fermentation use a single strain. So contamination is a major issue. So wood or plastic or concrete is a not suitable for single or uh, oh yeah, for single culture. Stainless steel, uh, like a, alloys of primary iron, nickel, and chromium, uh, molybdenum added to increase resistance to corrosion. So normally stainless steel, is uh, we use an alloy, primarily uh, mixed with iron, nickel, and chromium, okay? Common grades is uh, for uh, stainless steel is uh, 302, 304, 316, and 318, increasing resilience. The <clears throat> Okay, for bioreactor 316L, L is a, if we look at some of uh, industry, they use a bioreactor from stainless steel with code 316L. What mean L? L is a low carbon contents, okay? Stainless steel component use are joined in the oxygen free environment using a special technique known as a TIG or total inert gas welding, where argon used to displace O2 to prevent corrosion at the well caused by presence of O2. So here, if we use a stainless steel to join, to make a joining or to con uh, combine our components, so we need to using a welding system, but we must use a argon uh, gas, uh, not uh, oxygen gas. Okay, about the performance, mild uh, steel vessels still in use after 12 years of use for penicillin fermentation. Mild steel clads with stainless steel used for at least 25 years for acetone and butanol production. So it depends on what product or what process you want to use. It like a mill, this the same material, mild steel vessel. So for penicillin production is only can use for 12 years, but for acetone and butanol production is a 25 years. And then about the cylinder geometry of steroid tank bioreactor. Steroid tank bioreactor, <clears throat> uh, cylinder or have a curved base, uh, generally constructed to stand dimension, recognized uh, standard, international standard, organization stand, uh, organization, ISO, or British Standard Institute, BSI. 
fitted with sponge lotion uh rushton turbines typical dimensions okay uh i will show you the table and then h over d ratio that means a high over diameter ratio okay uh, refer to the table okay this is a for example okay this is a buffer we call it is a buffer for bioreactor here we call it a buffer and this is a we call it is a blade this is a high of bioreactor we call uh, we name or we normally we call as a we give a symbol as a h and then the diameter is a d okay geometry uh, okay we can see here h over d high over diameter must be 1.1 to 3.5 over 1 and length uh, uh, length of uh, blade over diameter should be 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 over 1 and then uh, be, uh, between blade to blades the gaps between blade to blades over uh, over over the what the length of blades uh, the length of two blades is a uh, uh, one point one to one to one point two okay 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 this is a uh, uh, this is a uh, name of uh, probes or system in the bio uh, in the bioreactor. First, we must have a uh, aseptic inoculation pipes, stirrer, shelf seal, and then working levels, buffer. This is a, we call a buffer. The, the function of buffer uh, <clears throat> to the function of buffer to what's called to to break up the bubble uh, produced during the fermentation. Okay, and then this is a sampling pot, impeller, uh, strial lines, an air sponge. Okay, the, during the air sponge process, so we sponge a air here if a aerobic process, so it will produce a bubble. So buffer here uh, will break up or uh, break up the bubbles. To the small bubble so it's easy to absorb in the growth of fermentation so dissolve of oxygen inside the bioreactor will increase okay this is a uh, <clears throat> geometric dimensions of uh, bioreactor so we can see here high of liquid in reactor to high of reactor HL over HT is a typical value is a 0 0.7 of 0 0.8. So actually it depends on level of foam produce. If a uh, foam produce is a high produce of foam, so we need to increase decrease uh, the ratio. High of rate uh, reactor diameter of tanks. Uh, and then this is all of that is about design. Uh, what uh, the process, the bioprocess engineer must know before design the bioreactor. Okay, uh, this is a geometry of steroid tank bioreactor. Okay, we can see here. Okay, we call it a DT here, and then all of that inside the geometry reactor. Okay, as I mentioned, as I shows in the my slide, that is uh, element element must be considered before we design our bioreactor. Bioreactor divided into working volume and headspace volume is a very important because to ensure it's not have a leaking because if a leaking, so it's a, the contamination will occur, and then working volume. Uh, fraction of total volume taken up by medium microbe and gas bubble gas all up 70 to 80 percent of total volume headspace volume remaining volume and then working volume depends on rate of form formation tendency of form larger headspace needed that's all from me
Thank you very much. Any question? Okay, uh, thank you for the lecture. Uh, that's a wonderful lecture about character and in pair processing, I think, yeah. Uh, maybe uh, I give information for you that in bioprocess study program, the bioprocess reactor design course is the capstone course for the bachelor student. And it uh, also become a specific competencies uh, that differentiate uh, it from other bioprocess study program in Indonesia. Okay, uh, before the discussion session, uh, maybe I will give a overview about the case lecture today. Maybe the first is uh, bioprocess has uh, three steps. Uh, upstream, midstream, and downstream. The bioprocess is a vessel which is uh, which an organism is cultivated in a complex manner to produce uh, the organism or a product in some special case. And there are seven characteristics of bioreactor. Uh, the first is mode, uh, bed, continuous, and feed bed. And second, the, the type of bioreactor which has two major system, tubular and steroid bioreactor. And the upscaling, uh, and the third is upscaling yeah, from the lab scale, uh, and then kinetic analysis, simulation, and the last is upscaling. And the fourth mm. is uh, system sterilization, aeration. The five is kinetic, and six is condition. Is there anaerobic or anaerobic process? And probe sensor used for several parameters. Okay. Uh, maybe. It, for the question? Is there any question for the participants? Uh, you can uh, doing the question, uh, ask a question in chat room or you can raise hand. Maybe. Okay, uh, maybe I can... Uh, if the first question this uh, came from Marlin Andriani from Yuntas Brawijaya. Okay, uh, let me ask about the upscaling. At the upscaling stage, there is a process of kinetic analysis and simulation. How long it takes to analyze and simulate before entering the upscaling state? Okay, maybe this is the first question. Maybe you can answer first, Dr. Husna. Okay. Oh, okay. Actually, it's a very interesting question. How long it takes to uh, to simulate and what's called uh, that, to simulate and to do uh, upscaling? Actually, after we get a kinetic analysis, so we will give using a simulation before we go to upscaling. Okay. Actually, it depends how fast you can do it, the simulation. The simulation has uh, many kinds of uh, modeling, such as uh, Monod, Liduki, Pirate, and others. And then you can use, you can choose what type of uh, tools you can you want to use. You can use a MATLAB, MATCAD, or any others. And then it depends on you how fast you can develop the simulation. And then after you develop the simulation. Uh, is the volume is as a small scale of volume for your simulation. So at that times you need to change the volume to the upscaling uh, to the the large uh, volume of uh, simulation. And then after you get a simulation of large volume, you check either uh, that is uh, similar or that is a uh, uh, amount you want. And then after that you can directly upscale or develop your upscaling. Is that clear why is my explanation? If not clear, I, I, will, I could explain again. Yeah, I think it's uh, very clear, Dr. Rusnul. Okay, for the next question, came from Jafar Arhat from Universitas Perwijaya. If the process is optimal on facultative anaerob, how to set and adjust the aeration appropriate the facultative anaerobic conditions? Sorry, I can't hear you. Can you repeat again? Okay. Uh, if the process is optimal on facultative anaerobic, 
how uh-huh. to set and adjust the aeration appropriate the facultative and aerobic conditions. Okay, if a facultative uh, anaerobic, so that means it can uh, it can survive the big microorganism can survive in the aerobic and anaerobic condition. So we need to understand the dissolved oxygen, D or we call it a DO or dissolved oxygen of the microorganism. Let's say it's a facultative, probably the dissolved oxygen is very low. So, but how much, how amount the dissolved oxygen? So we need to optimize, we need to investigate what's the amount uh, to optimize the uh, types of uh, microorganism. Okay. <laughs> And then for the third questions came from the Komang Winda Saraswati from University of Wijaya in 316 liter uh, bioreactor. Why is a low carbon content used for bioreactor? And what other characteristic does it have uh, that make it suitable for bioreactor? And what is the most ideal material to make a bioreactor? Okay, firstly, the ideal material for a bioreactor actually is depends uh, on size, what size of you want to go. If you want to go to the lab scale, uh, so perhaps glass material is suitable for you, as I mentioned before in my slide. But if you want to go to the lab uh, industrial scale or in just a scale or I could say in the large scale, so probably stainless steel is a suitable for your process, but it depends, it depends on the, your process. Like I mentioned before, if your process is a uh, not major issue, if a contamination, so you no need to go to the stainless steel because it will, it's a very costly. So you can go, you can use a, like a concrete, woods or others material if contamination is a not major issue in your process that's uh, the question the first question the second question what is the content of t316l low carbon so actually low carbon is <coughs> is actually is an alloy alloy is a means is a mixing between a few types of uh, metals Is that clear? Okay, I think it is the uh, same with the type of uh, yeah, uh, um, stainless steel, maybe. 316 or 314. Okay, that's clear. And uh, for the next question, this uh, there is a raise hand participants uh, for the Nehemia Satya from UNESCO Projaya. Maybe you can on camp on your care, uh, ask uh, to the Dr. Husnul directly. All right. Uh, good morning, sir. I would like to ask, uh, earlier in your presentation, you explained that a mild steel vessel bioreactor could be used for up to 12 years if used for penicillin fermentation and could be used for at least 25 years for acetone butanol production. How could yeah. we determine how long could a vessel be used during the design phase? Like if we're going to design a bioreactor, how could we calculate for how many years it could be used? Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. okay, thank you very much. It's a very good question. Okay. <clears throat> okay, like uh okay, for actually it depends on the industry. Uh, okay, it depends on industry, like uh, how, how, how do I say it? It depends on industry, like a penicillin production is uh, related to pharmaceutical uh, product or pharmaceutical or medical product. So that's why it must, uh, it has a standard, it has a standard to ensure that product has a very low contamination. That's why it's just only 12 years. But for acetone, uh, but, uh, butanol and others, it's a, normally it's a use for uh, other industry like uh, plastic, in the, uh, polymer industry, uh, tire industry and other industry uh, and other industries. So it's a not a very the contamination of uh, product is a not major issue. But your question is how we want to ensure 
uh, the biorecta is a uh, is a suitable how long is a suitable for our process so actually we need to understand first our process is that it's a for consumer for consume or not if a for consume is a it has a, their own regulation like a food and pharmaceutical pro, uh, product it have their own regulation how long the bioreactor can be used but for others product for others product is not very strict so Perhaps we can extend uh, the the year of uh, a year of uh, lifespan of bioreactor. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and then I give uh, uh, I will read uh, some question from the chat room. Uh, came from the use yeah, from the University of Jaya. What are the considerations to choose a suitable bioreactor for the commercial product such as butyric acid, methanol, enzyme, or H2? Okay. For commercial product, uh, for commercial products, uh, actually, this is a very hard to say. Uh, is a, you can use a stainless steel, you can use a, bio, a glass, actually it's cheaper, but normally for large scale, we use a stainless steel. But what scale of stainless steel is depends on your products, on your process. If your process is a very strong acid, like uh, uh, if your product produce a very strong acid, so perhaps you need to very hard or very strong type of stainless steel. Okay. Okay. For the next question, okay, I think from the uh, Miss Nur Istiana, uh, CS is one of lecture for a biotechnology study program. Uh, okay, uh, she want to ask how is the role of kinetic in bioreactor design? Oh, is, uh, is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can repeat. How is the role of kinetic in bioreactor design? Is it a different between pets and continuous bioreactor kinetic, doctor? Okay, actually, as we know, is a kin kinetic is a is a more to like a rate, okay, rate of uh, growth, rates of uh, substrate consumption, rates of uh, product product uh, rate of product production uh, production. So uh, actually, if we uh, if actually if uh, we get a result if we investigate the kinetic in the batch system so our design for developing of uh, upscaling is a uh, on batch system but if we investigate uh, from the lab scale in the the kinetic is in the from the continuous system so we can use the kinetics um, as a role to develop uh, pilot plan or industrial scale in the continuous system but i would like to uh, i would i would like to you know that is a, has an advantage and disadvantage between batch continuous and feed batch like a batch uh, like a continuous system it can produce a lot of product but it's easy easily to contaminate for batch Perhaps it's a produce a, a low products, but it's a very difficult to or very is a I could say it's a very difficult to contaminate because everything is a closed system. The continuous is a open system. Yeah, is that the answer? Yeah, I think uh, this is the good information for us. Yeah, the disadvantage or advantage for the pets and continuous. A system in bioreactor. Okay, thank you. And then the for the next question came from Pamela Dani. Uh, she want to ask about the bioreactor itself. Why bioreactor mostly have a cylindrical shape? Is there any specific reasons? Sorry, I can't hear. Can you repeat again? Pardon, please. Okay. Why the bioreactor mostly have a cylindrical shape? The form is cylindrical. Why? Yeah. Why? Is there any why? specific reason? Why the bioreactor have a cylindrical shapes or 
a tube maybe ya, yeah. uh, tube sip. Is there any specific reason maybe? Okay, did you, did you mean a cylinder curve? Cylinder, you mean a cylinder? Why the bioreactor have a cylinder vessel? Is that the question? Yeah, cylinder vessel, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay, normally, For submerged bioreactor, we call it submerged bioreactor. Uh, submerged fermentation is a liquid fermentation. We use a, a vertical, a vertical bioreactor. It's a cylinder by or cylinder bioreactor, bioreactor. Okay, but for solid state ferment, because it's easy to control, because it's easy to give uh, agitation, easy to mix everything there. Okay, because that's why we choose a cylinder. But has a bioreactor not a cylinder? It's a vertical, uh, a horizontal, uh, horizontal, uh, horizontal uh, shapes. Like uh, if you use, if, if you run, if we run a solid state bioreactor. I'm not uh, show you the here about the solid state bioreactor. Solid state is bioreactor is a solid state fermentation, which is uh, we ferment not in the liquid form, but in the solid form. So normally we not using a cylinder shape, but we use a horizontal shapes. So that the, the question is why we choose a, a cylinder shape because we uh, is easy to control Uh, to give uh, agitation from the bottom to up, and then easy to uh, doing uh, mixings, and then well uh, disperse of uh, oxygen if a uh, aerobic or aerobic process. Okay, thank you. And maybe there is uh, some participant uh, to ask the doctor Husnul. Is there any question? Okay, maybe the next question uh, came from the Dimas Tiaji Yusron. Okay, he want to ask uh, about how we able to build bioreactor in the scale of uh, small medium enterprises. Or in the home industry, maybe. Yeah. How uh, how we able to build bioreactor in a uh, scale of small medium enterprise or in the home industry? Okay, uh, uh, it's a very good question. How we want to develop a bioreactor in the home or small scale uh, industry? Am I right? That the question. Yes, exactly, doctor. Okay, so. <clears throat> Firstly, uh, normally, like uh, I could say, like a temp, uh, like a small industry, like uh, I could say, it's like a tempeh production. Tempeh production is one of the fermentation process that is a bio process. Actually, am I right? Okay, so actually, it depends on <clears throat> actually, it depends on your process. So maybe you can use uh, maybe for sterilization. Actually, I could say the sterilization you can use uh, like uh, hot water or steam water uh, to do for sterilization, and then to, for build up your bioreactor. If uh, contamination is a major issue, so you can use a stainless steel or maybe the glass bottle, which is, can stand to sterilize many times. Okay. Okay, okay Dr. Rosno, uh, there is a, a live question from uh, Mrs. Dina Wahyu Indriani, maybe Miss Dina can on cam or you can uh, unmute yourself. It's okay, uh, Pak Angki. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it is very interesting for me, the lecture today. 
and uh, the audience is very interesting also uh, to ask uh, with you, Dr. Husnu. Uh, I would like to ask about uh, how about we design the bioreactor using a non-metallic uh, ceramic uh, glass materials, especially for uh, when we using such as fermentation uh, reactor, we using glass. Is that any specific glass to make it or uh, what is the composition and what is the impact? Could you hit, hear me, Dr. Husnu? Yes, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay, can I answer now? Okay. Yes, of course. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, for glass, actually, uh, as long as it can uh, stand with a sterilization, uh, temperature of sterilization, normally temperature of sterilization is 121 degrees. Okay, if uh, we use a uh, heating sterilization, uh, so we can use that types of glass. It's not have a specific, uh, that type of glass can use for uh, bioreactor. It's not have specific, as long as the type of glass or materials can, uh, the type of glass can stand with a uh, sterilization system, either heating or chemicals or UV or others. And second thing is uh, it's not have a corrosion, uh, it's not have a corrosion problem if uh, the, our process is uh, uh, occur inside the, bio, the bioreactor. So how about the, how about the uh, comparison between the uh, stainless steel that you uh, said in the lecture? Uh, how about the comparison with the stainless steel, a glass okay. or uh, stainless steel? Okay, <laughs> about the comparison between glass and stainless steel, actually glass, uh, we choose glass normally in the lab scale. We're not using uh, glass for large scale. The reason is because uh, if we using a uh, glass for upscaling, you know, in the factory, that is a very messy process. So is uh, what what the industry worries is easy to break up if we do a mistake there. So that's why most of industry, most of uh, upscaling process, they choose uh, material stainless steel as a uh, material for bioreactor. Uh, even we using temper glass, doctor. If you want to use a glass, temper, sorry? temper, temper, temper glass. If you, I, if you use a temper glass, mm -hmm. so if you use a temper glass, I never use mm -hmm. for this temper glass, but I don't think so. It have a problem. But how about the cost? Oh yes, it's very expensive, I think. <laughs> if you are, uh, if you are, I mean, if you are industry, so your main uh, concern is about the cost. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Husno, for your uh, answer. Uh, thank you, Pak Anki. Okay, thank you, uh, Putina. And then for the next question, maybe from UP Hartono, uh, maybe you can ask directly for the Dr. Usnul. Okay, thank you, Mr. Anki. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Husnul Asan from the great and interesting topics today. Uh, I would like to ask you about, according to your experience, have you ever do a extraction with bioreactor to, to, uh, to get uh, essential oil from plants? Uh, uh, according to your experience, so uh, what type of bioreactor feedbacks or continues to uh, is the most suit suitable for extraction of essential oils from plants? Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, actually, extraction of uh, essential oil is not an uh, upstream process, it's a downstream processing. So if a downstream processing so is not uh, involved with a bioreactor, is maybe is involved with a, with a chemical reactor, 
I could say it's a chemi maybe chemical reactor. <clears throat> like myself, I have produced, uh, I never, uh, I'm, I could say I never uh, extract essential oil, but I extract uh, acetic and butyric acid from uh, leachate. Leachate is a liquid from a landfill. That's uh, the process of upstream. We're using a continuous membrane bioreactor and batch bioreactor, batch mode of bioreactor as well. And then uh, during the process of extraction, we're using a uh, liquid liquid extraction, adsorption, and a few methods. I, I and I believe uh, for essential oil uh, extraction, perhaps uh, the best method is uh, in USM. Uh, we use a supercritical system, supercritical system to extract essential oil from gaharu. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Fasal Asan from the answer. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Uh, Fasal, there is uh, some question from the Zoom chat. Uh, the first is uh, from Naraswari Nastiti from Virginia University. Uh, she would like uh, to ask about the buffer component in bioreactor. Is that any special characteristic to put a buffer in bioreactor? Uh, uh, is it fine if we put uh, more bubble in pyrector in order to break uh, more bubble uh, in a short time? Uh, it is fine or not? Maybe if we uh, put uh, more bubble in the pyrector. Okay. Okay. Yeah, actually, it's a very good question. Uh, actually, uh, we need actually for buffer how much how units of buffer we need to put inside the bioreactor actually it have a calculation it's not a simplified to put how much we want because if you put more buffer actually is a increase your cost of increase to de, uh, increase your cost to develop a bioreactor so so you need to count how much uh, exactly the buffer uh, your bioreactor needed. It depends on your size of bioreactor and <clears throat> the dimension of the geometry dimension of your bioreactor as well. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, it also depends on the uh, numeric method. Yeah, I think before we put some uh, buffer in the bioreactor. Okay, mm -hmm. and then uh, for the next question from the Zoom chat. From the Miss Novia Luciana, uh, she is a lecturer from the en uh, environmental engineering study program, and uh, she want to ask, uh, what are the consideration to choose the fit media uh, between gas, liquid, or solid for supporting the microorganisms life in bioreactor? Okay, the question is a. Uh what the suitable uh, media for microorganism either in the liquid or solid am i yeah. right the, okay actually we need to do a research <laughs> that is a that's an important thing we need to do a research so like last time what i have done i developed a probiotic chicken feed so uh, i investigate what's the water uh, water what's the best water contents for my microorganism. So finally, I found that the best uh, water content is uh, 80%. So it can be occur in the solid state fermentation. So actually, we need to do a research. Yeah, OK. That's clear, Dr. Hosno. And then for the next question, maybe this is the two participants that raise hands. Maybe I give uh, first session for the Rizki Utami, yeah, the MC. <laughs> Maybe you can give a question directly. Okay, thank you, Mr. Anki, for the opportunity. And thank you, Dr. Hosnul, for the lecture. Uh, I would like to ask if, is there any specific standard to choose uh, the mode of operation of the bioreactor based on the phase of the product? I mean, uh, like, Maybe if we want to produ produce the liquid, liquid product, it's better if we choose the continuous mode or is there any consideration? Thank you. 
Okay. Okay. Actually, it's not a uh, specific standard to choose uh, either uh, batch continuous or feed batch. It depends on your target, your objective, your re, uh, objective of production or objective of your process. For example, for if you want to produce uh, in the large, if you have a small bioreactor, but you want to produce in the small, uh, sorry, if you have a small bioreactor, but you want to produce a high volume of products, so perhaps you can use a continuous system. But if you use a continuous system, you must ensure, you must very ensure that a contamination is not occur. So, uh, because a continuous system is an open system, it's a not closed system, it's an open system. So you need to sterilize uh, fresh nutrient outside the bioreactor and then pump into the bioreactor. So this is an open system. So you need to ensure that has a no contamination. All of a lines, pipeline need to sterilize. But if you have a big bioreactor, so why not you go to the batch system because it's a closed system and then uh, it's a closed system and it's a very i could say it's a very hard to get to occur in the i mean it's a very difficult to contamination occur there uh, so can i ask again yes okay. uh, so basically the the phase of the product is not taken into the consideration of choosing uh, the mode operation of bioreactor. Is it right? No, the, actually for mode bioreactor is decided by us, decided by us and depends on our facilities. Like I mentioned, if you have a big bioreactor and your uh, target to produce a high, high uh, amount of bioreactor, high amounts and quality product, so perhaps you can go to the batch. But if you uh, have a small bioreactor and then you can, uh, you can aware or you can, uh, uh, you can consider it about uh, contamination, so maybe you can you go to the continuous system. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hosmo, for the answer. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, and then for the next question, maybe I will give the opportunity for the Rahma Rizki. You have a uh, raise hand. Maybe you can on mic and on cam, maybe. Okay. Uh, can my voice come through? Can you hear yes. my voice? Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, uh, in your lecture, you mentioned that uh, before designing a bioreactor, there are some criteria. Uh, one of it is the versatility for a range of processes. Uh, can you give more explanation to that and why is it necessary? Thank you, sir. Uh, again, one of the point is sterilization. Uh, pardon, sir? Can you repeat again your question? One of the factor is astralization. You mean uh, astral one of the criteria is the versatility for range of processes. Okay. Right. Okay, yes. yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. You, okay. Versatile, uh, versatile, versatile of process, that means <clears throat> the Bioreactor not only can use for your products. Let's say if you are industry, maybe this time or this uh, this year, your target is for ethanol production. But maybe after a few years, and then you have seen that has a buy others products probably can be used. It can be uh, can be generated generate from your system. So your Bioreactor, your vessel can be used for that types of process. So that's I mean, a versatile. So it can be used for other process as well. Okay, it is clear, uh, Rahma Rizki. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And then for the next question, <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr. Snow, there is a lot of uh, question <laughs> from mm -hmm. our students. Yeah. The next uh, question from the Zoom chat. Yeah. 
uh, came from Fawas Nandana. Yeah. He want to ask how much uh, do you spend to make this two? Uh, maybe uh, he mean uh, how uh, how much do you spend to make a pyrector for producing the uh, aesthetic uh, aesthetic acid? Yeah. And it, uh, is it very economical for industrial activities? Whether you plan to make a large scale in the industrial field? Okay, uh, maybe the uh, the question is related to my research. Am yeah. I? Right? Okay, yes. Actually, uh, my re my research is uh, to produce acetic and butyric acid from leachate. Actually, the 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 process uh, have been patented in Malaysia, in Malaysia, okay. Uh, then uh, that question is how much the process, how, how much the time consumed for this process, actually the time consumed for this process only once day, one day only. And then the, uh, actually the, the about, when we're talking about the cost uh, effective, yes, I could say that is a very, Cost effective. Normally, we get uh, acetic and butyric acid is uh, from petrochemical industry. In this case, we can harvest acetic and butyric acid from leachate. However, th the situation in Malaysia, leachate is uh, one of a hazardous waste. In Malaysia, leachate considered as a hazardous waste and is uh, under local authority. So even I have a one complete uh, process, and then I show to the company. They uh, they said they not they are interested with that. Uh, no, that uh, this process. But he now they mentioned to me. They said if they implement my pro my uh, my my research or my process in his company. So he said he not get uh, any benefit from government. So that's the problem. The problem is the uh, implementation of regulation from government because it's a uh, because of a uh, leachate is hazardous waste. So uh, government point a uh, uh, point a company to clean that types of uh, to treat the, that type of waste. So if uh, the company apply my process, extract ST and butyric acid, and government knows about that, then perhaps government will cut the benefit to the company because they, uh, they understand that can be generate income from that, uh, that materials. Okay, I think it's, uh, okay, from the, Next question, Dr. Snow. There is the two participants that raise hand. Maybe I will give the first for the uh, right hand, Ryan Hanif from the Prajaya University. Maybe you can ask uh, directly to Dr. Snow. Ali, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ramki, for the opportunities and. First of all, I want to say thank you very much, Dr. Husno, for the very inspiring presentation and, and lots of insight for us, especially for bioprocess engineering students. I would like to continue about Pawas questions, last questions. Uh, I would like to ask your opinion about when will, uh, your opinion about when will bioengineering or bioreactor based industry become the world main industry because as we know, uh, bioengineering or bioreactor industry are still the promising future uh, industry uh, for the future. But I would like to ask your opinion about the time uh, directly. What, when will uh, industry based on bioengineering become the world main industry? Thank you, Dr. Husno. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. It's a very good uh, question. The question is, uh, I could conclude the question is uh, when the bio pro, bioengineering or bioprocessing engineer uh, engineering field can establish in the world. Am I right? Okay. Okay. So actually, uh, I actually it depends on the poly government. I could say it depends on gov uh, 
policy, uh, local authority policy, like uh, Ministry of, uh, like here in Malaysia, Ministry of, uh, Ministry of what's called, uh, Department of Environment under Ministry of Agriculture and Environment. Okay, then nowadays they're not uh, interest or they not have a tendency go to the chemical process for treatment. They will push. Uh, all of a company tweet a biological process for treatment. So that means they increase, they, can, they try to establish the biological process in Malaysia. But I'm, I don't know in the Indonesia, same like uh, others industry, like uh, food industry, uh, medical industry, and then oil and gas industry as well because last time oil and gas industry they use uh, many chemical to carry out to push uh, they inject uh, the uh, kinds of something like uh, gas or oil uh, something like a gas or chemical to push out uh, oil but nowadays they just inject a, a types of bacteria and then the types of bacteria will produce gas and then uh, so, uh, gas and some kind of chemical to purge out the uh, oil. That's I notice about that the recent technology. So okay, it depends on the government policy actually. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you, Doctor Husno. Already got the point. Thank you for your uh, answer. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, for the next question, I think this is the one uh, participant that raised hand. Uh, Kaulan Sakila Tresna, do you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to meet. Uh, my, my name is Kaulan Sakila Tresna Nugraha from Bio Process Engineering, Rawiya University. I would uh, like to ask you about bioreactor. This bioreactor uh, is one of application of bioprocess uh, and uh, well uh, is, is this machine can uh, produce like uh, fertilizer or food or beverage or something that uh, relate to bioprocess. Uh, thank you. Uh, the question is, is that a bioreactor can produce uh, food, fertilizer and other products, right? This is a question. Yes, yes of course. Yes. The, the answer is, of course, the bioreactor can. Uh, produce uh, food like uh, tempe. You know tempe. Uh, are uh, you eat a yes. tempe? Ah, this is uh, what's called a, a soy cake. All right, it's a soy cake. We call it a soy cake. Okay. Uh, yes, it's a from uh, by actually it's a from fermentation process. And then actually, if you not, I don't know, you realize or not. Actually, that is a for fermentation process. And Actually, you also use a bioreactor to produce a tempeh, but you not call a bioreactor. You just call it maybe tang or maybe blanger or quali or something like that. I don't know what you call it, but actually, actually, it's, it's a simple bioreactor. And then, uh, yeah, it also can produce a fertilizer as well, like a composting system. If you produce, a, if you have a tang, you do a compost. Uh, a compost process, compost process or compost system so and finally it's a produce of fertilizer that is a call actually it's a bioreactor as well so but sometimes people not call it a bioreactor people just call it as a tank but the concept is a bioreactor uh, okay and um, is the uh, bioreactor can produce another soy product like tofu or ketchup or yes. Ucho. Uh, for yes for as long as that product is uh, using a process of fermentation oh 
but Thank but you. you you must consider but you must think about the cost if your product is a, like a soy cake is a is a soy cake is a very cheap but why you want to use a very expensive uh, bioreactor maybe you can use a very very cheap bioreactor just uh, like uh, your vessel or anything so the small uh, the uh, not the small the cheap uh, vessel not so expensive okay so you must consider your uh, product as well because we want to avoid uh, a cost is over than uh, product price. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, welcome. Okay, thank you. And uh, for the next question from the Zoom chat again, from uh, Takarunia. Okay, it's a student from uh, paper process engineering. Uh, according to the value of dissolved oxygen that need, how to convert the percentage of gas O2 and CO2 to the value of DO? Uh, sample, the value of uh, DO needs uh, two milligram per liter. This is a question from uh, YouTube live streaming maybe. Okay, the question is how to convert uh, O2 to dissolve oxygen. Sorry, I can. Can you repeat again, please? How to convert the percentage of uh, O2 and CO2 to the value of GO, dissolved oxygen? Okay. Okay. Actually, we don't need to convert percentage of oxygen or CO2 to dissolve oxygen. Okay. Actually, we have a special probe that is a, we call a uh, PO2 probes, uh, which which is can uh, evaluate or monitor dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen means a uh, what amount of dissolved oxygen dilute or dissolve in the our broths or our uh, liquid form, our media. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we can use the probe. Uh, to the yeah, yeah. probe, yes. Okay, okay, and then the next question from the rest and uh, participants, Kezia Millenia. Can you on cam maybe, Kezia? Okay. Hello, Kezia. Hello. Okay, maybe more loudly, or you can sorry, just the I volume. Turn on the camera. Okay, we. So I want to ask your opinion because we know that we are facing the progress of industry 4.0 and I don't know what is the director which is still a problem uh, for the development of this machine. Thank you. Okay, maybe I can a little catch up about the question. Maybe how the how to develop a bioreactor in industrial uh, revolution 4.0, maybe. Okay. Okay. Uh, the question is how to develop a bioreactor accordingly to Revolution uh, 4.0. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Okay. And that is a, a, it's a quite good question. Okay. Actually, uh, as I mentioned before, in the bioreactor, inside the bioreactor has a lot of probes. So perhaps we can then uh, perhaps for Revolution 4.0, even in USM, we also have that uh, equipment. We can monitor the bioreactor in using uh, our phone, our smartphone. 
So that is a uh, that's our uh, this is a revolution for which is a, we can see how much the fermentation was occur, how much uh, the dissolved oxygen inside the bioreactor through our phone. So it has a connected to our bioreactor. That is a, the latest uh, or the recent technology. Uh, I could say is uh, related with a revolution 4.0 because we will reduce uh, or we will minimize the labor. Uh, I mean, the labor cost of labor. So the challenges is how, how to connect the with the IoT system, maybe, doctor. Or oh, how to. Or how to connect? Okay, yeah. the, the, the the question is how to connect the. Okay, actually it have a the system. It has a software. It have a device as well to connect a bioreactor to our smartphone. So I could uh, because it's a more to electronic parts. So I do, I don't know how to. to to share it here, but it's a more to electronic part, but. Uh, it's, we can, yes, it can, yes, it can be, uh, it can, yes, it still can, uh, it can be achieved and it's achieved already to control bioreactor through our smartphone. And then uh, it's connected with a software and devices. Okay, maybe we can uh, use uh, from commercial program, maybe from the, need to connect, doctor. Okay, uh, for the next questions from the Zoom chat again, came from Vicky Afriliano. <clears throat> he want to ask <clears throat> what the difference when we using agitator and bubble for driven bioreactor, maybe for specific microbe. Uh, what the difference? Yeah. So what the difference between agitator and aeration? So, yeah, maybe, yeah, paper aeration for driven bioreactor. Okay, uh, aeration is uh, to supply uh, to supply uh, oxygen to the our system. Okay, to supply air, sorry, to supply air to our system. And how, by the way, the air is in the bubble form. So the bubble form, that means is, uh, it can come out and finally lost come out to the our uh, bioreactor and finally lost so that's why we need a uh, agitator agitator to uh, mix all of uh, oxygen all of uh, air to, to dissolve in our uh, our our uh, our system inside the bioreactor and agitator also uh, agitator also make all of the process all of uh, inside the bioreactor become homogeneous and then uh, heat transfer also become homogeneous and everything is uh, become stable and then aeration is uh, the function of aeration to supply to aerate our uh, bioreactor that is a. Uh, it look like a similar, but it's a difference. One is a uh, to supply or uh, to push uh, air inside the bioreactor. One is other uh, ones is uh, to make it homogenize the uh, air, the air uh, in, uh, inside the bioreactor, and then uh, to homogenize heat inside the bioreactor. Maybe it's uh, and it also for agitator also make the bubble become a smaller. It's a bro a break the bubbles as well. Okay, thank you. And uh, for the next question, uh, from the neural istikoma, uh, how can uh, we know that the bioreactor that we use is still in good conditions and has yet to be contaminated? How is the testing that is used to ensure its quality? And is there any specific treatment that we can use? Okay, okay. Uh, the question is how we want to ensure that our bioreactor is still reliable to use. Uh, yes. Am I right? So yes. actually, uh, we need to run the bioreactor. First, we can, uh, what's called, uh, uh, 
Actually, we can do uh, some uh, like uh, monitoring or spot check to our bioreactor, but we also can run the bioreactor if we have seen a contamination. So we need to investigate why the contamination was occurred. And then if the contamination was occurred because of vessel or because of the smooth uh, of the inside the bioreactor, uh, uh, because of the problem inside the bioreactor, because of break, uh, broke out, uh, the vessel is broke up or anything, so we need to change the bioreactor. But if a small or minor uh, broke up, like a piping or valve or anything, maybe we can change the, uh, the apparatus. And then it also depends on uh, what type of product you want to produce. Like I mentioned before, if a food and if a food and uh, pharmaceutical product it has uh, their own regulation. So they have uh, their own regulation. The types of bioreactor they are required. So it depends on what industry you want to use. If a pharmaceutical and uh, food industry is a very particular. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, maybe Dr. Rosno, uh, maybe you want to drink <laughs> because there is uh, some question from the participants. Okay. Okay. If you want to drink first or we can continue the questions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's up to you. If you want to continue the, uh, the question also, I'm okay. I'm ready. Okay. We want to take a rest uh, five minutes or ten minutes is okay also. Okay, maybe we we have uh, two questions more. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the question from Zoom chat is uh, came from Kusti. Uh, uh, he want to ask: Is the use of the bioreactor able to increase the concentration result uh, in the manufacture of bioethanol uh, bioethanol compared to traditional fermentation? Uh, maybe how the how to increase uh, the concentration result uh, in the bioethanol production compared to traditional fermentation. Okay, okay, it's, uh, okay. Actually, it's a good question. Okay, how the bioreactor can uh, increase yield of bioethanol production? compare with a traditional fermentation. Okay, as we know, the traditional fermentation, they're not a control system. Like, uh, it's like what I can say, like a traditional fermentation, maybe they use, uh, they use a wood uh, vessel or concrete vessel and not have a sterilization and then they not monitor the pH, they not understand about the dissolved oxygen, they not have an aeration and agitation. But in the bioreactor, everything controlled. Everything is a monitored and everything in the optimum condition. Therefore, the product significantly will increase. Okay. Okay. And uh, maybe the last question came from the Mr. Uh, Dr. Bagus Hermanto. Maybe Mr. Bagus. Yeah, you can. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you for uh, the time. Uh, hello, Dr. Kusnul. Uh, yes. My name is Bagus. Yeah. Uh, okay. I would like to hear from you based on your uh, experiences. How do you usually apply a control system to your uh, bioreactor system? Do you usually uh, use, uh, for example, commercial con uh, control system or you uh, directly design by yourself? Because, uh, for example, in the first stage, you need to have a certain condition for early stage. And then uh, after, for example, seven days, you have a different optimal uh, condition that uh, you need to control. So based on your exper experiences, maybe this, uh, 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 you can uh, share your experiences. Maybe. Thank you. Yeah. 
uh, what I understand from your question is you ask me based on my experience how I control uh, how I'm usually control the process uh, using a bioreactor. Am I right? That's the question. Yes. Do you use uh, commercial uh, available in the market or you design by yourself? Uh, for example, some sensors and you uh, make by yourself or you just uh, buy from the commercial market? Okay, uh, my I, I did both. I did both. Okay, for like for example, uh, acetic uh, like my previous project, acetic and butyric acid production from leachate, we using a membrane bioreactor. Actually, it's a membrane bioreactor we are developed by ourselves. We design by ourselves. Uh, then it's uh, completed with a probe and sensor. Everything is a uh, completed with us. Uh, everything uh, the the bio membrane bioreactor is uh, occupied with uh, a few sensor and a few probes. And then I also has an experience using a, a commercial bioreactor. And then my experience is, I could say, a commercial uh, bioreactor is a more easily to handle because everything is there. But for these, for our design, it's a very hard to <clears throat> to. It's very hard because normally, uh, because in my experience, I design is a not batch system. It's a semi continuous system mode. So I need to design uh, about the holding tank, everything in the uh it have a, a lot of sensor there is it clear okay Mr. thank you for sharing your experiences it okay. will be valuable for us yeah thank you okay thank you okay um i think it's enough yeah uh, for the discussion session maybe for the other equation maybe can we keep and Maybe in the letter we can send to Dr. Husnul for the question. And thank you so much, uh, Dr. Husnul, for your sharing the wonderful topic for us and for all of uh, answer uh, for today. And uh, for the next, maybe we can have a good collaboration, uh, yeah. such as uh, joint research, uh, student exchange, and other good collaborations. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay, inshallah. Okay, I think uh, is this is enough for the discussion session and this the main uh, agenda. And I will uh, back into the MC. Yeah, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. That was a very enlightening lecture. Thank you so much, Dr. Husnul, for the sharing, and thank you, Mr. Anki, for guiding the lecture. Um, it was a very long discussion session, actually. So maybe Dr. Husnul, you can have a drink first because you answer so many questions. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Uh, okay, finally, we reach our last agenda today, which is closing. But before that, we're going to hear the closing speech from head of Bioprocess Engineering Study Program, Dr. Yusuf Bibisono. To Dr. Yusuf, time is yours. Okay, thank you, Reski, for the opportunity. Dr. Husnul, I would like to thank a lot uh, for your time and also your uh, uh, many, many knowledge that we uh, obtained today. Of course, I heard a lot of questions. I uh, just check. We have almost uh, 30 questions, <laughs> so it's quite a lot. <laughs> And uh, everything is uh, answered by Dr. Husnul, and this is very valuable for us. Uh, for your information, uh, the participants today is uh, mostly our students from the first grade until uh, almost uh, the, the graduation stage. So maybe the question is also quite broad from the basic one until the advanced one. Also, lecture from uh, different uh, study program from uh, biotechnology, from environmental engineering, from uh, agricultural engineering, also bioprocess engineering. So, also a lot of uh, questions. Uh, 
Uh, I would like also to extend uh, this lecture to uh, Dr. Husnul in, in the future. I, I hope we have also opportunity to share our research. Maybe we can visit also uh, USM when the pandemic is over. <laughs> I hope uh, uh, very soon. Yeah, and uh, also uh, in 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 the future. Also, I would like to invite also Dr. Husnul. Uh, personally, also in person, uh, come to Malang, yeah. Because uh, in this event, I cannot offer you even a uh, small drink, Doctor Husno. So no, just, <laughs> just uh, we can meet online here, like like this. But uh, I hope with your uh, uh, eminent expertise, we can learn a lot of uh, information. We can learn a lot of knowledge. Uh, we can share the the experience from your research to our students. So, uh, on behalf of the head of department, I would like to uh, uh, again to thanks and also thank you for all students to joining uh, to join us uh, for this event today. I hope you learn a lot of things, and of course, uh, for the uh, new students, you have uh, time to. Learn a lot, yeah, in in our study program to learn about bioprocess engineering. So I hope this lecture also will help you to learn more about our field. Thank you, uh, Dr. Koso, again, and uh, I hope we can see uh, very soon in a more convenient uh, situation. I hope in the future. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Dr. Yusuf, for the speech. Uh, maybe we can take a picture with Dr. Husnul. Uh, Again, okay. online. <laughs> yeah, online. Yeah. Okay, doc uh, Dr. Husnul, are you ready? Dr. Yusuf, are you still in the room? Eh, sorry, Dr. Husnul, are you still in the room? Oh, nggak ada ya? Okay. Unfortunately, uh, Dr. Husnul already left the uh, Zoom. So let's continue. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yusuf Yubison. For all the participants that join us today, we are very honored to have Sorry, and we can influence the future, but not see it. Let us all be guided by all the things we have learned and heard throughout the lecture, and hopefully we'll be able to apply it in our future. Thank you, thank you, and thank you very much. And before we part, please accept this first from us, from the committee. Kalau ada jarum yang patah, jangan disimpan di dalam peti. Kalau ada hilaf dan salah, harap sudi, maafkan kami which roughly means please forgive us for our shortcomings. Till we meet again, perhaps in the offline event in the next lecture, and may all of you have a good day and stay healthy. That's all from me. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very, thank you very much. Dr. Husnul. Thank you, Dr. Husnul. Mana Dr. Husnulnya? Thank you very much for the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Rizky. Thank you. Thank you so much.